Right, so here we are on the second part of the video series about how to automatically encode video into H.265 as it's downloaded. Now, I was going to release this video a few days ago, but Josh.5 has been working on an awesome container that will do all of this and more for us. Now, he's still got some work to finish it off, but it will be out soon. So it looks like there's going to be a part three of this video as soon as his container's finished. But for now, let's wrap up what we started in part 1 using the docker path mapping. Now if you haven't watched part 1 of this video, then please go back and quickly watch that first, because some of the things I discuss in this part just may not make sense unless you've seen that part first. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I set everything up on my server to get this working, and also how I set up Handbrake. So here's what we'll be looking at on my server. Firstly, we'll take a look at the shares and the various subfolders in the shares and how they're used in this process. Then we'll take a look at which download clients are used, both for Usenet and Torrents, and how they're set up and configured. And then next we'll take a look at Handbrake. Then of course we'll be looking at Sonar and Radar and their configuration. And then we'll look at some little tweaks we can do for the process, such as scheduling when Handbrake should run and when it shouldn't, and various things like that. Ok, so let's start. So firstly let's look at the shares. I use three main shares for this process. Now obviously I have a media share, inside of which has various subfolders, one for TV shows, one for movies and one for music. Now I use MB myself and not Plex, and MB basically looks at each of these subfolders for the various libraries that it uses. Ok, so that's pretty straightforward and standard. So let's move on to my download share. Again, all of my downloads go into a separate share. And this share also has subfolders. There's a folder for torrents, there's a folder for Usenet, and you can see I've actually got a third folder here, which isn't used in this process at all, so just ignore that. But for those of you who are wondering what I use it for, basically I use this as a shared download folder, which is shared amongst all of my VMs that I use. So if I download something on my Mac OS VM, I can also access that same download on my Windows VM. Right, so let's take a look inside the torrent subfolder. And in here you'll see five folders. There's the standard ones which are created by my download client, which is completed, incomplete, torrents and the watch folder. We also see this folder here called copied. Now this is a custom folder that I put here myself. And after my torrent client has downloaded something, that completed file is copied and put into this copied folder, and that way I can use it and I don't have to actually affect the seeding of the original torrent file. So if we look inside the completed folder, the subfolders here, games, media and software, these are categories that my download client creates. And so these same folders also exist in the copied folder, because obviously everything's copied that's finished downloading into the copied folder afterwards. And we'll be looking at that in greater detail later on, when we're looking at the download clients. Ok, so now let's have a look at the Usenet subfolder. And in here are the standard folders that my Usenet client creates. And if we take a look in the completed folder, there's a folder for movies and one for series. These are categories inside the download client, and each category gets put into its specific folder. Ok, so that's how my download share is set up. I also use another share, which I call Downloads Post Processing. And this is the share where the re-encoded media goes after it's been downloaded and it's gone through Handbrake. And in here, there are three subfolders. So the folder here called Media, this folder contains re-encoded media files which were downloaded by the torrent client. And the other two folders, the Movies and the Series, these contain re-encoded media files that were downloaded by the Usenet client in either the Movies category or the Series category. So now let's move on and take a closer look at the download clients. So for download clients, for torrents I use Deluge, and for Usenet I use ncbget, and both of these containers run through a VPN. So first we'll take a look at the Usenet client, ncbget. Now it's much easier to set up the auto re-encoding using Usenet than it is torrents, because you don't have to worry about things being seeded. Now you can see here that the forward slash data of the Usenet client is mapped across to my download share, and then the Usenet files go into the subfolder of Usenet, which is set up in the web UI of ncbget. So let's have a look at the web UI, and log in. Ok, so I'm going to go to settings, and the first thing I'm going to look at is the paths. 
Now you can see here, the main directory is mapped to forward slash data forward slash Usenet. Now you can see here the forward slash data is mapped across to the download share. And if you remember in the download share, I had the subdirectory of Usenet. So in that subdirectory of Usenet, I then have the completed, intermediate, NCB and the queue directories. Now the next important thing to look at is the categories. And you can see here the various categories that NCB get uses. Now I've got one here called movies and one here called series. And another really useful thing about NCB get is it unpacks everything it downloads automatically. Well, so long as this is checked, yes. So there's no real custom changes that you have to make with NCB get. So let's just quickly look at the process of an NCB file being downloaded. So as it's downloaded, the NCB file will be given a category if from sonar series and if from radar movies. And then that will move into the incomplete folder where it will start to download. And once it's finished downloading, it'll move across into the completed folder, whereby if it has the category movies, it will move to the movie subfolder. And if it has the category series, then it will be in the series subfolder. And because with NZBs, you don't need to seed the files, we can just use these files straight away and Handbrake can process them here as is. So now let's look at Deluge VPN. You can see here that the data folder is mapped across to my download share. So now let's look at the settings in the web UI. Let's go to preferences. And if you remember the forward slash data was mapped across to my download share. And then I have the incomplete, the completed, the torrents and the watch folder. They will come off the subfolder, the forward slash torrents. I like using this subfolder method because it keeps my torrents and my Usenet separate. So this is how everything's mapped to my downloads folder. But I also use plugins here. There's three that I use. I use the Extractor plugin, the Label plugin, and the Copy Completed plugin. Now the Extractor and the Label plugin are built into Deluge, and all we have to do is check the tick box next to them to enable them. However, the Copy Completed plugin is a third-party plugin, which you have to install by clicking on the Install button here, and then browsing to where the what's called an egg file is, and installing it from there. Now I've put the Copy Completed plugin in the description if you want to use that and install it. So the first thing we want to look at here is the Label plugin. This basically allows us to assign labels to different torrents based on a category when they're downloaded. And you can see here I've got a Games category, a Media category and a Software category. And if you remember in my Download Share, in the Torrent subfolder, in the Completed, I had these three folders here, the Games, the Media and the Software. So these correspond to my three labels here. And now if we look in this folder here copied, we can see the same folders here, the media, the games and the software. Again, these correspond to these categories here. But everything in this copied folder is copied from the completed folder using this plugin here. And you can see the copy path is set to forward slash data, then the subfolder torrents and copied. And I've got this checked here, so it appends the label so whatever goes into this copied folder, it appends this label as a subdirectory, so games, media and software. So that's why we see these three folders here. So that's all very well that all of our completed torrents are copied across into the copied folder. But as I'm sure you know, a lot of torrents when they're downloaded are compressed files, either zip or RAR files. So we need to also be able to extract the files. So I use this plugin here, the extractor plugin, which will automatically decompress any torrent files. You can set here where you want them to be extracted to. So I have mine extracted into the copied folder and then the forward slash media. Now unfortunately with this plugin, you can't have different extraction paths for different labels. So what I do is have all of my torrents just extract into the media folder here. And you'll see why later. And it's also important to tick this box here because we want a subfolder created with the name of the torrent that's extracted. So now let's take a look at what happens when a torrent's downloaded. So here are the three main folders, incomplete, complete and copied, and then the various label categories underneath. So when Sonar or Radar download a torrent, it's given the label media. And whilst it downloads, the torrent will exist in the incomplete folder. Then when it's finished downloading, then Deluge will move the torrent from the incomplete folder into the completed 
and because it has the label media, it will then be moved into the subfolder of media. Then once here, the copy completed plugin will copy the torrent across into the copied subfolder, then into the same folder that corresponds to the label of the torrent. Now, nine times out of 10, a torrent needs to be extracted from various RAR files. And so this is where the extract plugin will come in. So if the torrent needs extracting, what it will do, it will extract it into the folder that we set the media folder in the copied directory. Now the downside of this is obviously if you download say something that isn't media, a game or software, then it's going to extract into that media folder as well. Now the way around this is if you run two separate containers for Deluge, one where you only download media and one where you download everything else, then you could avoid this. But unfortunately, this method isn't flawless and it isn't perfect, but this is about the best I could think of. Okay, so by the end of the process, we should have our completed torrent copied and extracted into the copied folder in the media subfolder. So that leaves the original torrent file in the completed folder where it can continue to be seeded. Okay, so now let's look at where the media files will be for both torrents and Usenet when they're ready to be re-encoded. So it's the completed and the copied folder that we want to be watch folders that Handbrake takes a look at. And Handbrake can actually have multiple watch folders. So what we'd do for our first watch folder, we'd have it look at the Usenet files. So we'd have it look at the completed folder. And for the second watch folder, we'd have it look out for torrents and we'd have that look at the copied folder. Now, within the watch folder, it will also look through all of its subdirectories, so the movies, series and the media subfolders will all be looked at as well. Okay, so let's go back onto the Unraid server and to the Handbrake container to set up these watch folders. Okay, so let's have a look at the Handbrake template. And the version of Handbrake that I'm using is the JLassage version here. And if we scroll down, the storage directory here is just set to mount then user. I just left this as default because I don't really use this part of Handbrake anyway. But for the watch folder, this is set to look into the completed folder of where the NCB files are in the download share. And now the output directory, the output directory here outputs into the download post processing share. Then here where it says automatic video converter, the preset I'm using I call it my H265 because inside of Handbrake itself I've made my own custom profile which we'll look at in a moment. For automatic video converter format I chose MKV and for automatic video converter I don't want it to keep the source files so I've set this to zero. So after it's finished encoding it will delete the source files from my watch folders. Now this is really important here, the output subdirectory I've set this to same underscore as underscore SRC. So what this does is anything it sees in the watch folder, when it converts it, it puts it in the same subfolders in the output directory. Now, if we scroll down here, this is where I've added a second watch folder. In Handbrake, you can have multiple watch folders. So I'm gonna remove this quickly, and I'll show you how I added it. So all you need to do is click add another path portal or variable and for configuration you want to choose path and then for name watch2 and the container path we want that to be forward slash and then watch2 and then for the host path I've set that to my download share into the torrent subfolder and it's looking in the copied folder so I'm going to add that so now we can see we've got the second watch folder this one being for torrents and the first watch folder this one being for NZBs. So I'm going to click apply and done. Okay, so now let's have a look inside Handbrake's web UI. This is where I made my custom preset. And as you can see here, the preset set for custom and then my H265. So how I have mine set up is in dimensions, I have auto cropping ticked and storage geometry I have set as optimal for source. So whatever resolution the source file is, it will copy that same resolution. And for filters, I leave all of this as default. Then on the video settings, obviously I choose the video encoder as H.265. And important here, I choose a variable frame rate and I have the frame rate the same as source. I choose constant quality here. And for the preset, I set for medium and the RF as 22. And for me, I find I get good results with these settings. Now onto audio, under track selection, on auto pass through, I have MP3, AC3, DTS and AAC checked. 
so it will pass through these sound formats if found in the original file. Now let's move on to subtitles. So for those of you who want to have subtitles, pass through into your re-encoded file, click onto track selection, and then for selection behavior, you can either use first track matching the selected languages or all tracks. For most people, probably first will be enough. And then find the language that you want to have. And for me, that's English. And so now it will pass through the first subtitle track it finds in the source file that's in English. Then everything else, I don't touch at all. And then I go on to presets and then save as and give it a name. And I also tick default preset, although you don't need to do that. And then just click OK. OK, so now let's look what happens when Handbrake sees a file appear in its watch folder. So remember there's two watch folders, one that looks for Usenet and one that looks for torrents. And this is their location. And for Usenet we have two categories, movies and series. But for torrents we only have the one media. And remember that's because the extract plugin in Deluge won't append the label. OK, so let's say in the watch one folder, a media file ends up in the movies category and therefore in the movies subfolder. So Handbrake's going to see this here and then start processing the file using our custom preset. And once it's finished, it will be put into our output folder. And for me, that's the downloads post processing share. And because we're using the same subfolder as source flag, it's going to put it into the subdirectory movies folder inside of our output directory. And because we've told Handbrake to delete converted files, then it's going to be removed from the watch directory. Right, so that's how Handbrake and its watch folders work. So now let's move on and look at Sonar and Radar. Now Sonar and Radar only know the location of where the downloaded files are because they're told it by the download client. So for Torrents, Data, Torrents, Completed, Media. And for Usenet, Data, Usenet, Completed, Series or Movies. And we know that Handbrake is putting the files into its output folder, which is downloads post processing, into either the subfolder media series or movies. So all we need to do in Sonar and Radar is to map these locations here to the media series and movies folders in the downloads post processing. So let's go ahead and look at those mappings now. Okay, so let's take a look at Sonar's template first. And if I scroll down, all of this part here is default. I've just added two new paths at the bottom. I've added Usenet re-encoded path and Torrents re-encoded path. So let's have a look at those. So again, configuration type, I've chosen path. I've given it a name, which appears on the left here. And for the container path, obviously I've put data, Usenet completed series, and I've pointed that into the series folder of the downloads post processing. And again, in the torrents re-encoded path, I've given it a name. The container path this time, data torrents completed media. And I've pointed that across to the downloads post processing and the media folder there. OK, so now let's look at radar. And here it's the same. I've added two new paths, the Usenet re-encoded path and the torrents re-encoded path. For Usenet, I've done exactly the same as I did in Sonar, except the container path goes to Usenet completed movies and it points to the movies folder in the downloads post processing. But the torrent path is exactly the same, the container path being torrents completed media, pointing to the downloads post processing media folder. OK, so next let's just take a look inside of the web UI of the container. Let's go into settings, and then I'm going to go to the download client. And you can see here I've got Deluge and NZB get here. Let's click on to Deluge. I have everything that's sent to Deluge to be given the media category as it downloads. So that will make our workflow work correctly. And for NZB get, the category here is series. And let's quickly look at radar. This is set up exactly the same. For Deluge, the category is media. And for NCB get, the category is movies. OK, so that's basically how I've got everything set up on my server for this process to work. But now I'll just show you a couple of little tips and tweaks that I do that I find work quite well for me. One thing I've got set up is multiple sonar and radar containers. You can see here I've got another sonar and radar underneath. Now these containers are set up totally standard without any custom docker mapping at all. 
So if I shut down these two here and start up the other two, now my sonar and radar are running totally standard and they're not having any re-encoding done. Now this can be useful if there's something that I know is going to download and I can't wait to watch it and I don't want to have to wait for it to be re-encoded. Now another thing to look at, let's have a look inside the handbrake template. You can see here I've pinned half of the cores in this server to use handbrake and these other four I've left free. Basically I don't want something to be downloading and then hammering all of my cores, slowing down a VM that I have running on these four cores here. Now finally, the last tip I'm going to give you, I'm only going to half give you this tip, is using user scripts. We can set up a script that can start and stop a container at various times. So what we can do with that is to only start up, say, the handbrake container at night when we're not using our server, and then we can have it using all of the cores, and then it will shut off again at the time when we're going to be using it. But if you don't know how to set up a script to do that, then please see my video, Two Minute Tips, that will show you how. Now, it's not out right now, unless you're watching this video maybe in a week or so, so please be patient until I put that up. So here we are at the end of another video. Now I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Remember there should be a part 3 coming out for this soon with a whole new and much more easy way to re-encode downloaded videos and videos you already have into H.265. Now I'm going to say goodbye for now but before I go I just want to give a really big thanks to all of my Patreons and all of my supporters out there. Thank you so much guys it means the world to me. So whatever you're all up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.